Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alex Baluka, and I would like to welcome you to this uh, February webinar organized by the EPSRC Network Plus for the decarbonization of heating and cooling. So be welcome, make yourself comfortable. Um, um, my name is Alex Baluka, and I look at different aspects of the um, thermal energy conversion majoring in combustion. The uh, purpose of the network is uh, to look at the different challenges of decarbonizing the heating and cooling sectors and behaviors. Um, this month, we will have two speakers who are leading investigators of the projects funded through EPSRC decarbonizing the heat. Um, we're very happy to have them here and thank uh, them for their time. Now, Dr. Saleh uh, Maybody, who works at Durham University, will present findings from the Solar S and HP project. Okay, so please, um, Dr. Maybody, the uh, word is yours. Thank you. Great. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, well, I joined the uh, Darren University almost a year ago and have been uh, working on evaluating the dynamic performance uh, novel uh, thermochemical seasonal uh, solar thermal energy storage with a focus on the application in uh, providing domestic uh, heating demand of dual links in the UK. Well, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the advanced seasonal solar thermal energy storage using thermochemical uh, compression technology for domestic space heating application. Uh, let's start with a brief uh, introduction of seasonal solar thermal energy storage. Uh, the seasonal solar thermal energy storage is a technology that allows excess uh, solar energy generated from uh, solar collectors during uh, sunny periods of a year, uh, such as uh, summer months, to be stored and used for uh, heating production during periods uh, of low solar radiation, such as uh, you know uh, winter months. This helps to overcome the intermittency issue of uh, solar energy. So as you can see in this figure, uh, during a summer, we've got a large amount of excess uh, solar energy, which cannot be used without a storage. So by storing the excess solar energy, we can use this uh, considerable amount of energy for the time of the year that uh, solar radiation is not uh, sufficient. Uh, well, uh, thermal energy storage can be categorized into four uh, main uh, types, sensible uh, heat storage, uh, such as molten salt technology, uh, latent uh, heat storage, such as uh, phase change uh, materials, sorption heat storage, can, which can be divided into two types, uh, physisorption and uh, chemisorption. Uh, physisorption refers to the physical absorption of gas or uh, vapor, molecules onto a solid surface, such as uh, zoolite and uh, zeolite and water. Chemisorption refers to the chemical absorption uh, through the chemical reaction. There is another uh, thermochemical heat storage, such as uh, calcium oxide, that carbonization and decarbonization of uh, calcium oxide can produce heat. Among uh, this uh, type of among this type of thermal energy storage, uh, thermochemical energy storage offers a higher uh, energy storage density uh, as well as close to zero uh, heat loss, which makes this uh, technology uh, as a promising uh, solution for uh, seasonal solar thermal energy storage. And in our project, we use uh, this technology. Well, uh, here you can see the comparison between 
uh, energy storage density for different materials uh, used for uh, thermal energy storage for storing 10 gigajoule, which is equal to 2,000, almost 2,700 uh, kilowatt hour heat. As you can see uh, in this figure, uh, estancium chlor chloride with expanded graphite and uh, ammonia has a higher energy storage density with uh, less volume occupied and close to zero uh, heat loss. Uh, these, are, these advantages are very important in seasonal solar thermal energy storage where both long-term uh, heat loss and energy storage density are key consideration. Besides estrancium chloride, there are other uh, materials which can be used in the technology, such as manganese chloride or uh, calcium uh, chloride. But due to the advantages of uh, estrancium chloride in terms of uh, thermodynamic uh, properties and um, lower desorption temperature and higher adsorption temperature, we have chosen uh, this material uh, for the project. Well, uh, here is the basic configuration of uh, the system consist uh, consisting of chemisorption uh, reactor, solar collector, and a uh, refrigerant uh, container uh, acting as an evaporator and a condenser. The chemisorption reactor is a type of shell and, shell and thin uh, tube heat exchanger where the uh, chemisorption uh, tubes are filled with the adsorbent and used in the chemisorption uh, reactor. I will go through the details of the uh, chemisorption uh, reactors and tubes in the next uh, slides. Well, uh, during charging process, the heat transfer fluid, which is water in our case, is heated by solar collector and follows uh, to the chemisorption uh, reactor to dissolve the ammonia, which are then uh, condensed in the condenser at the ambient. Uh, if the um, heat transfer uh, fluid uh, coming out from solar collector doesn't reach the a temperature level required for uh, desorption. Compressor, which is installed between reactor and uh, condenser uh, switches on uh, and uh, assist the process by pressurizing the uh, vapor ammonia uh, in the reactor uh, to, uh, to condense the ammonia at the ambient temperature in the condenser. Uh, during discharging process, the liquid ammonia in, uh, in the evaporator evaporates at the ambient temperature, uh, while the adsorbent uh, adsorbs ammonia and releases considerable amount of uh, uh, adsorption heat. The, so the return temperature goes to the uh, solar collector and takes uh, the uh, solar heat as much as possible, uh, depending on solar irradiation and ambient temperature, and follows to the reactor to absorb the released heat from adsorbent. Well, uh, here in this figure, you can see the theoretical desorption and adsorption temperature at different uh, heat sink and uh, heat source temperature for different compression ratio of the uh, compressor. In other words, this figure uh, show the highest possible temperature uh, that the heat transfer fluid can achieve in different ambient temperature as well as the lowest possible uh, temperature uh, for initiating the desorption process. For example, at uh, 10 uh, degree, when the ambient temperature is uh, the 10 uh, degree, the, the solar collector, uh, the, actually the temperature of the solar collector temperature should be at least uh, to 80 degree for uh, desorption process if there is no compressor. But 
if we use a, four, a comparison with the comparison ratio of four, we can decrease the, the required temperature for actually to 50 degree, uh, which is uh, considerably uh, beneficial for the uh, high latitude region like the UK. Uh, solar irradiation is very uh, limited. Uh, so also uh, this, uh, as, as you can see, as the same ambient temperature, 10 degree, the system can provide heat as hot as almost 75 degree, which is quite sufficient for the most space heating facility. Uh, due to the important uh, role of the comparison in the, uh, in the novel system, we first develop a detailed dynamic model for the simulation of the uh, compressor and validated the dynamic model over uh, a wide range of operating condition in the lab. Uh, for that purpose, the, an experimental apparatus was set up in the lab to assess the validity of the mo uh, modeling and simulation method uh, for different uh, working conditions. The comparison model uh, proposed and developed uh, was shown to be not only accurately able to accurately deal with the uh, complex, uh, uh, actually complexity of the uh, dynamic behavior of the comparison working um, fully, but also can uh, properly pr represent the uh, comparison for uh, um, analyzing and uh, optimizing purposes. The dynamic compressor model was integrated in our model for, for modeling the whole system, the whole compressor assisted thermochemical seasonal solar thermal energy storage. More details on uh, modeling and simulation, as well as the experiments, can be found in the paper uh, recently published. In our group. Well, uh, another uh, important component of uh, compressor assisted thermochemical seasonal solar thermal energy storage is the uh, chemisorption reactor. Here you can see the chemisorption tubes where the adsorbent, which is the composite of strontium chloride and uh, expanded graphite, was compressed and packed outside of the each uh, chemisorption tube and uh, surrounded by supporting mesh. These chemisorption tubes are installed in the uh, chemisorption reactors, which uh, uh, with the arrangement, as you can see in the figure uh, in the left-hand uh, side. So in, in uh, this system, each tube can be treated as a one chemisorption module, so the whole system can be easily uh, scaled up or down uh, based on the uh, space heating demand of the system. So by adding more chemisorption tubes or, and uh, you know, removing uh, the chemisorption uh, tubes. Currently, in our lab, uh, we are building the prototype of the system. So in the near future, we plan to conduct experimental investigation on the chemisorption reactor and the, its performance and also its performance then connected to the solar collector and, and uh, the system for space heating to generate the space heating demand. Here, well, a dynamic performance of uh, the system during uh, charging and discharging process has been uh, simulated uh, using the working pair of strontium chloride and ammonia and um, using the real weather data from uh, Newcastle in the UK. So to model the whole system, we, we integrated uh, domestic space heating uh, demand model, uh, compressor model, and also a, a model for 40 square meter flat plate solar collector facing south, uh, the tilted uh, 45 degree. Uh, well, in the middle figure, you can see the variation of reactor pressure. And also you can see how the addition of a compressor unit 
can reduce the pressure of uh, ammonia vapor inside the reactor. Uh, for example, at 12, uh, the pressure dropped from 8 bar to almost 3 bar by using 3 compressor uh, in parallel. This pressure uh, drop uh, causes desorption uh, to occur at relatively lower temperature due to the uh, monovariant characteristic of uh, the chemisorption reactor. And so more ammonia can be produced. This can be seen in the right-hand side uh, figure where the rate of ammonia production for different number of compressor is shown for the same sunny day in, the, in uh, Newcastle in the UK. Here is a dynamic performance of the system during uh, this charging process for three consecutive days in September with high solar radiation, low solar radiation, and medium solar radiation. Uh, for modeling a space heating demand, a simplified model was used uh, considering uh, ambient temperature, room temperature, uh, which was set to uh, 21 degree, and uh, overall heat loss, coefficient, heat loss coefficient of the dual link, uh, which was set 150. Uh, this shown in the uh, right hand side uh, figure. Well, the left hand side figure showed the variation of outlet temperature from solar collector and uh, the uh, solar collector and the uh, reactors for these three days using a heating facility with the fixed feed temperature to uh, 60 degree and return temperature and fixed return temperature of uh, 40 degree. As you can see, the space heating demand of the dual link uh, can be uh, mostly uh, covered by the, by the technology, uh, but just for a few hours when the solar radiation is uh, zero and the space heating demand is too high, the system cannot cover that. So we need backup system to operate to cover that space heating demand. Uh, now let's uh, take a look at the overall uh, annual performance of the compressor assisted thermochemical seasonal solar thermal energy storage for uh, the different solar collector areas and uh, uh, compressors. Uh, as it can be seen uh, in the top uh, figure, by increasing the solar collector areas and uh, number of uh, com uh, compressors, uh, more solar heat can be stored in the system. And it can be seen adding even one compressor to the uh, system is more effective than increasing the solar collector areas by 2.5 times. This is uh, due to the fact that although, you know, adding more uh, solar collector results in uh, more solar uh, heat uh, co collected uh, by the system, but this doesn't necessarily increase the solar collector temperature and there are some uh, limitations uh, for that. So uh, as you can see in this figure, uh, redu reducing desorption temperature uh, is much more effective uh, to store solar heat uh, than uh, you know, increasing the solar collector. But this comes with the cost of uh, compressor uh, consumption. So as you can see, adding uh, one uh, compressor to the system, by adding one compressor uh, to the system, we could uh, store considerably more solar energy with a relatively very low amount of compressor consumption. But uh, increasing uh, the number of compressors, um, although you know, increasing the number of compressors can uh, result in more solar heat to be stored, but uh, it also comes with the compressor, uh, the electricity uh, compressors. So uh, th this raises a trade-off uh, between uh, the amount of solar heat we want to store and uh, consumption of uh, compressor. Well, uh, in this figure, 
uh, you can see the actually the annual performance of the uh, system uh, using two compressors connected to 40 uh, solar collectors for different uh, domestic space heating demand uh, was uh, shown. As it can be seen for energy efficient uh, dueling, when the uh, 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 domestic space heating demand is less than 5,000 uh, kilowatt hour, the system could, the technology could, uh, you know, uh, cover almost 100% of uh, space heating demand. Uh, but this share decreases by increasing the sp uh, space heating demand. But even if the building is uh, in energy inefficient um, with uh, almost high space heating demand, uh, about 12 uh, 1,000 kilowatt hour, the system uh, can provide more than 50% of annual space heating demand. Uh, this shows the great potential of the system uh, in for using in uh, supplying space heating demand, even for the uh, region, uh, for the high lat latitude region like the uh, UK, when uh, where the uh, solar radiation is uh, very you know limited uh, well um, in, in this project uh, the feasibility and capability of advanced seasonal solar thermal energy storage using thermochemical comparison technology uh, to provide 100 percent solar frag solar fraction of domestic heating demand are uh, in, in investigated uh, the introduction of compressor uh, can effectively reduce the desorption temperature, enabling to further utilize the solar thermal energy. Uh, we found out that with the uh, integration of 40 square meter flat blade solar collector with the novel thermochemical storage system with the working pair of strontium chloride and ammonia and a compressor unit of uh, 3.58 uh, compression ratio, the system could achieve 100% solar fraction of domestic heating demand of an energy efficient building and more than 50% uh, of uh, solar fraction of annual uh, domestic heating demand, even for an uh, energy inefficient building in the UK. Well, uh, in the end of the interview, in the end of uh, the presentation, I would like to thank you, uh, thank the principal investigator of the project, uh, Dr. Jivay Ma, and co-host of the project, Professor Tony Raskili, Professor John Council, Dr. Huashen Bao, and Dr. Yusuf Khalid, and my colleague Ahmad Najaro. I also uh, want to thank uh, industrial partner of the project, and of course, ETSRC for funding the project. Uh, thank you.